the impact of the women's national soccer? Well, it's interesting. I don't know if they need this impact. Like the women's U.S. national soccer team has been a group of celebrities for I would say 12 years now. Like, listen, I was having a discussion with Kimmy from the break room this morning before the show about it. I can name six players on the U.S. women's national team. I cannot name a single men's soccer player after the World Cup in 1994. Landon Donovan might be the only one. Who's the guy with the beard? Lawless? Exactly. Yeah, Alexi Lalas. Yes. Okay, so that's the last guy I can remember. Tony Miola. you remember him because he's on the women's broadcast. Oh, but no, I remember Tony <laughs> Miola <laughs> because he tried out for the Jets as their field goal kicker. Yeah. But the point that I'm trying to make is I don't think these women need the exposure. I think these women are not only world-class athletes, they're legitimate celebrities. And it bothers me every time that question comes up. Well, is this good for women's soccer? I don't think they need it. Like, it's good for women's soccer at a national level, too. They are celebrities. It is a winning team. People love winning. They have, you know, beaten the world. But then the next step is people translate it into a women's pro league again. And how will that work? And you lose out on all the stars on one team. You lose on everybody rooting for one team. You go to a game. We've seen it here where you've got four great players, international players. It's not quite the same thing as watching the U.S. against France or the U.S. against and I somebody feel like else. We've been here before. But this happens in many sports where even if it's individual sports in the Olympic mode. Well, I don't think hockey gets up. I don't think the NHL gets a big boost from the You're Olympics. Right. Yeah, right. sure. But it's easy. They didn't go. it's easy to root for the U.S. or easy to root for Canada if it's your. But when you you know you separate people on teams, it just becomes different. But what's really bizarre is you know you do the women's professional soccer league, and even here in Rochester, where you have the greatest player arguably that ever lived, you weren't drawing. Yet nobody knows who the men are. Side by side, Cincinnati and Atlanta with the MLS are outselling their NFL franchises for professional soccer in America with men, and nobody's going to women's games. How does that make any sense to anybody? I just think it wears off. It does, these these things don't come up often enough, so the interest dies down. And there's it, there's nothing doesn't seem to be that it gets sustained. Well, it is That's a just tough the sell. momentum does not continue. And as Mike said, I mean, we had look at what we had here. This was supposed to be a great soccer market and a great market for women's soccer with Abby. And it, well, you're right. And I, I'll make the example if, when if that team toured now went around the country, and I don't know if there's a plan to do that now. You would think maybe there would be, depending on. They would sell out all over the place for a period of time because that's going to maintain. They're going to see the U.S. women play. And they did They're going to go celebrate. Iceland. Exactly. Yeah, and people. Right. But but it's a it's tough. It is tough to go and make yourself a pro league that people are going to buy tickets for and go all the time. That is not quite the same thing. And if that's what corporate, you want. You know, corporate America hasn't gotten behind it either because that's a bigger part than ticket sales. And and that's really what has to happen.